Hello and welcome to the final event of the 2015 Gas Shocks Compact Cup season. Today the action comes from the 2.5 mile Donington Park Grand Prix circuit. Last time out at Snetterton, Steve Roberts regained his Compact Cup title. He's had nine wins from 12 races, often by less than a second. So this weekend the focus is on the fight for second between Mike Tovey and James Gornall. There's battles for the minor placings too and Matt's caught up with some of the protagonists. Down here with one of the drivers from the Gas Shock Compact Cup, it's uh, Ben Pearson. Final two races here today at Donington Park. You've qualified fairly well. What do you reckon you can put out in the bag? Yeah, hopefully a good two consistently good races, good scoring points, hopefully. See what we can do. The championship isn't looking too bad in terms of your placing. I think you're inside the top five, which is uh, just proven how good your results have been this year. Well, it's more consistency rather than actual outstanding results. I've just been banging in top tens after one another. It's, it's going to be very close for sixth between John O'Davis and Ben Pearson, so I'm really looking forward to the rest of the day for, to see who gets that place. And of course this year you haven't quite graced the podium, but you've been very, very close on many occasions. I've graced the podium twice. Oh really? Twice at Alton Park. So it's a big improvement from last year. I think we were 22nd in the championship last year. But as my dad says very, very often, speed costs money, son, how fast do you want to go? And we've been wonderfully joined by Lakeside Hire and Motor Claims Network for this year, who have really helped push us forwards with some funding and Mintex brake pads so I can just dive into every braking zone as late as possible really really helps. And of course this weekend here at Donington Park full Grand Prix circuit in use so you haven't qualified too bad. Well 10th I mean it would have been nice to have taken pole again obviously but I couldn't quite do that I'm just rubbish at hairpins. I get too, I get too um, sort of aggressive on the way out come out nice and broadside opposite lock and lose all, all the time really. So. Well John I'm sure you'll be fighting hard today to try and hold on to that uh, fifth place in the championship good luck. Thank you very much. It's James Gornall and Richard Miles on the front row of the grid, Mike Tovey and Joe Wiggin on row two. We're all set for round 13 of the Gas Shocks Compact Cup here at Donington Park. The lights go out, the race gets underway and it is a pretty good start by uh, James Gornall from pole position. A good start too from Joe Wiggin from the outside of the second row of the grid. And I think he's already up into P2. So it's Wiggin up to second place from fourth on the grid as this big field of cars, almost 40 of them, heads through Redgate Corner for the first time. We look at the number 69 car there, which is Simon Bastiman, who started back on row 14 of the grid. Here is Aaron Morgan, number seven, who was just a little bit behind him. As they drop now down through the Craner Curves for the first time, it's a 13 minute plus one lap race. Down into the old hairpin for the first time then. There is Morgan, you can see him in the blue and yellow car there, some dust kicked up by one of the cars in front and a bit of rubbing going on further ahead as well. Morgan's able to profit from that too as they head now towards Schwantz Curve. There's number 34, John Watt, who we heard from at the top of the programme in the middle of that pack, heading up the hill towards the right-hander at Coppice Corner. About halfway around this first lap, there's the number 52 car of Paul Hinston. He started in fifth position on the grid. But down towards the chicane for the first time, the uh, Fogarty S's it is in the lead of the race just James Gornall but some rubbing there from Mike Tovey and those are the two that are battling for second and third in the championship a little bit of contact between the two rivals there there's only a point separating them coming into this weekend Tovey was with the advantage but it's Gornall now with a big on track advantages locking up and breaking there is Paul Hinson he's got that wrong he runs out wide Steve Roberts oh and a spinner that's Jonathan Davis there's contact further back as well I was just going to say that Steve Roberts qualified further back than he should have done on row five and there's more spinners as well. Absolute chaos on this first lap of the Compact Cup race. There is Roberts then, the man that regained the title last one in 2013 at Snetterton a few weeks ago. On board we go with Simon Welch heading into the Goddard's hairpin. Oh and there's contact! And that spins around, well, both of the cars. Number 15, James Barrett, was the victim there. Welch spins around as well. Welch started on row 19 of the grid. Barrett a row ahead of him. And there is that number 15 car, one of the Raw Motorsport prepared entries. Here is the fight for second place, and it's Joe Wiggin back ahead of Mike Tovey now. We saw Tovey running wheel to wheel with Wiggin, uh, with uh, Gornall, I should say, going into the Fogarty S's for the first time. But it's Wiggin that's back through now. Dust being kicked up by, I think, Steve Roberts there as they came out of the old airport. Yes, Roberts from ninth on the grid up to fourth. 
So there was a lot of chaos and carnage on that first lap. Roberts, the champion, has fought his way through all of that. Tovey goes back to second place then. As we watch this scrap a little bit further down the order, it includes the number 30 car, Chris Eaton, who started this race on row 16. The man from Thermiston in Leicestershire, so not too far away from this Donington Park circuit. Richard Miles, number 24, who shared his car yesterday in the road sports race with Mike Bushell of British Touring Car Championship fame. He there in close proximity to the number 52 car of Paul Hinson, who got the Melbourne hairpin wrong on the previous lap. And making their way now through the Fogarty S's. They go left, they go right, then down the short straight towards the Melbourne hairpin. It's Gornall now that's stretching away in the lead of the race. Second and third, still pretty tight between the uh, Raw Motorsport prepared car of Mike Tovey, the AW Track Sport car of Joe Wiggin. Then next up you have the uh, Steve Roberts car in fourth position. James Wynn Stanley there, a little bit further up the order than he has been at some points this season, so that is good to see. The practical performance car entered machine. There is the fight for fourth place, though. It's Ben Pearson, in fact, that is challenging the Steve Roberts car there. John Watt as well in number 34, coming through in eighth place as they end lap two now. Going on to lap three into Redgate Corner. Gorn it is with the advantage over Tovey in second place. Joe Wigg in third. Roberts is fourth. In fifth place is the number 99 car of Ben Pearson. Sixth is number 24, which is Richard Miles. Uh, a driver that is making up some places there, I think. There's the number 33 car of Clive Brooks, and just behind him is number 11. That's Simon Walker Hansel, the ex Formula BMW racer, having his first time out in the Compact Cup. And a bit of a mistake there as well. We saw from the rather sideways Daniel Kirby. The field, though, heading down towards the old hairpin once more. There's Declan McDonnell in the uh, black, white, and or black, yellow, and pink car, I should say. The Makatak Racing uh, livery there. Here is Tovey, though, in the second position. Heading up towards McLean's, Wiggin in third, Roberts in fourth. And uh, this is a pretty important stage of the championship in the battle for second place because if it stays like this, then Gorn will go on along. Drop scores will be overtaking Mike Tovey. Just uh, one race left to go, of course, later on today. And that will pretty much make it a winner takes all showdown in that final race of the championship later on. But that's for P2. And has already won the championship, is running in fourth place. So by side a little bit further back, you can see there. But it's Gornall that continues to lead. The ex-British GT champion. Meanwhile, for second, it looks like Wigan was trying to line a move up there on Mike Tovey as they came down to the Melbourne hairpin. It's a right-hander. And it's up to the left-handed hairpin at Goddard's. There you can see the 34 car of John Watt. Just behind John is the number 58 car of Ian Jones, who was a podium finisher at Brands Hatch earlier this year, of course. We've not seen too much of Ian at the very sharp end since then. So they are having a decent little scrap there, and that is for eighth and ninth positions. And Jones getting a good run out of the hairpin there. He's getting alongside John Watt now. It's Simon Roach uh, that's just in behind them there in number 65. He's another of the regular championship front runners, and also a scrap going on between the number 99 car of Ben Pearson and the number 24 car of Richard Miles and it's Paul Hinson trying to make it almost three wide as they go through the Craner curves it looks like those two might have swapped positions though as they head down the hill it is now the 24 car that, well, that had its nose in front but as they now go towards the right hander at the old hairpin it's Pearson back ahead I think then Miles Hinson just all snagging the back of Richard Miles' car there Almost seems to verge miles on and he's alongside now the number 99 of Ben Pearson as they're making their way through the left hander at Schwantz curve now up towards uh, McLean's and they're still absolutely together and he goes through. Richard Wiles has gone through there to take the place away. That's for fifth position. And Simon Roach now has got ahead of uh, the car of, I think that was John Watt as well. So a few changes going on a bit further down the order. Uh, Miles there looks to be edged wide, but no, he stayed on the tarmac. James Wynn Stanley in the yellow car, just playing that watching brief as well in number 17. He's running there in 12th position, but a great fight going on here. It's outside the podium positions at the moment, but it looks like it is. Was that Pearson that turned uh, ahead back in front? But heading down now towards the Melbourne hairpin. Wonderful fight that's going on here. Um, the front number plate is uh, just uh, dropping off. I think that's the Ian Jones number 58 car. Cars locking up. There is Simon Roach in the 65 car, the Rutek International Racing uh, prepared machine.
heading now up towards the left-hander at Goddard's. Another hairpin, two in quick succession here at Donington Park. And it looks like Ian Jones was bravest on the brakes, but that means he runs out wide on the exit of the corner. And the mark driver that's making up places there, I think, is going to be the number 88 of James Nutbrown. He started the lap in 11th position. He's now up to 8th spot, I reckon. And he started on row 9 of the grid. So James Nutbrown making good places here. The X into steps and Cleo Cup racer. Ian Jones, though, going through on the inside of Paul Hinson now. And Nutbrown being edged back down the order. He was hung out to dry a little bit there. And it's Simon Roach going back through on the inside at Redgate Corner. As has often been the case this season in the compact cup, the best of the scrapping is to be found outside of the top three or four or five positions. It's a little bit further down the order. Nut Brown going back ahead of Hinson there, down the inside into the old hairpin. Now, under where Starkey's bridge used to be, then to the left-hander at Schwantz Curve. Here is the fight. It is still rumbling on for fifth and sixth positions, this one. And that's between Pearson and Miles. Miles to the four at the moment in that scrap. There's Owen Hunter as well, number 47, and David Drinkwater, number 77. And those are both drivers that uh, have had uh, well, wins in the case of Owen Hunter and podium positions in the case of David Drinkwater during the course of this season. David, we've not seen all of the races. Owen probably having one of his uh, week at weekends, but he is still fourth in the championship coming into this weekend. Look at this, though. It's side by side for fifth place as they go into the chicane, and it looks like we've had another change there. Ian Jones was the driver watching on in sixth position. There's Jonathan Davis, who after his spin at uh, the Melbourne hairpin is playing catch-up. But down towards us at the Melbourne hairpin they come. Jones again quite brave on the brakes. Does he make up a position through at the hairpin there? I think he might have done. So up towards Goddard's they go. The top four have broken clear. And it's now, well, I think, having been shaken back a little bit there maybe, is Ben Pearson. There's Win Stanley with Hunter going up the inside of him. And that is Jones there, I think. No, it's, is that Jones on the grass? Yes, I think it might be. I think he has lost some ground there, having been in a relatively promising position. So, over the line they go then. Certainly at the front of this group, it's the 24 car. 65, Simon Roach is next up. Uh, then the 99 car of Pearson. Then it's the 50, well, it was the 52 car, I think, of Hinson that was next through. Wonderful scrapping this for the places in the lower end of the top 10 in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. The pack just seems to have been split up a little bit now into two sort of groups of about half a dozen cars, really. Hunter there uh, taking advantage as one car goes wide and therefore drops back down the order, and that is, I think, uh, the 58 of Ian Jones once again. So here we go then. It's Miles, 24, in fifth position. Roach is sixth. And the rest of them making their way through. There's Drinkwater, a bit out of shape there, doing battle with Hunter. Having a great old fight. Hunter on the national circuit, of course, in the opening meeting of the season, was a winner here at Donington Park. Not sure if he's going to be able to uh, replicate that this weekend on the Grand Prix track. Down the exhibition straight again then, and it's Miles with a few uh, car lengths in hand then. The IT analyst from Richmond, he did some two-stroke karting as a teenager, but turned his hands to compact cup racing from last season. Meanwhile, it's Gornall that is still leading from Mike Tovey in second, Joe Wigg in third, and Steve Roberts in fourth position. And this is the fight for second, making its way into the Goddard hairpin. There seems to be nothing that Mike Tovey can do about James Gornall. Equally, Steve Roberts in fourth place seems powerless to do anything about the top three. So over the line they go. James Gornall still with a pretty decent lead here over the rest of them. But again, some big sideways moments going on further back. I think that was, was that what in the thick of that alongside Paul Hinson? Yes, I think they were uh, just about alongside one another as they came through that time. So sixth is Roach, I think. Now seventh. Is that Nut Brown? Yes, it is. Up to seventh place. Then behind him, we've got Pearson. Behind him, we've got Hinson. And John Watt, number 34 it is, that completes the top ten at the moment. Absolutely frenetic stuff in the compact cup. So Nut Brown from 17th to 7th. Great drive from him. I guess he would have thought that uh, his qualifying performance was uh, not what he would have expected. But qualifying was so tight this morning. 
17th position with only 1.09 seconds off the pace. I mean, that is quite something. It shows you how competitive this compact cup is. Final meeting of the season for these cars and drivers. There's Ian Jones with his uh, front number plate hanging off just behind that number 17 car of James Winstanley. 34 John Watt just at the rear end of this top 10 with only uh, a couple of laps to go of this race now. So the white car of Nut Brown as there's a side-by-side -side battle for second position and it's Joe Wiggin on the inside line now. He's gone through. Can Tovey get back through on the exit of the Melbourne hairpin? They are absolutely alongside the rookie racer. The, uh, is Joe Wiggin on the left-hand side. The more experienced Mike Tovey, the ex-production BMW champion. He's on the outside line for Goddard's corner. They're still alongside. Tovey trying to tuck through there on the inside. I think he's just about got his nose in front as they see the last lap board this time while they're virtually inseparable. A few lockups going on then as the field negotiates Goddard in the minor places in the bottom end of the top ten and outside the top ten indeed. And Joe Wiggin has gone through. Now he's got half a car in front of the number 35 of Mike Tovey who runs wide and this could be crucial points dropped for Tovey especially if his teammate Steve Roberts can go through as well but he can't, at least not yet. But this is, uh, well, it's another couple of points dropped if it stays this way for Mike Tovey. And in the battle for second in the championship with James Gornell, he can ill afford this. Dust kicked up as Tovey, in his determination, just runs out wide a bit there, over the edge of the white line and the kerbs there at the old hairpin. As we look at James Gornell just sliding that car around McLean's corner. A bit more frenetic further back. Wiggin, who is still looking for his... Uh, first podium finish in the Compact Cup came close at Silverstone a couple of meetings ago is it going to happen in the next couple of minutes here at Donington Park John Watt has David Drinkwater climbing all over the back of him now and this is for the final place inside the top 10 Drinkwater has a look around the outside but he can't make that work he's only got a handful more corners to go meanwhile a couple of places further back Owen Hunter trying to keep Ian Jones at bay. Second and third right together as they head down the straight towards the Melbourne hairpin for the final time. But thoroughly unflustered is James Gornall there in the number 18 car around the right-hander for the final time. Back up the hill towards the last corner of the lap, the last corner of the race. James Gornall looking good here for his third victory of the season. The only driver, apart from Steve Roberts, to win on more, win on more than one occasion this season. He's now going to make it three wins for 2015. And he goes up to the line and he takes the chequered flag. Meanwhile, second just is going to be the 41 car of Joe Wiggin holding off 35 Mike Tovey and 56 Steve Roberts. Here's a battle a bit further back down the order. This is for 19th and 20th positions indeed. But it includes the uh, former single-seater racer Simon Walker Hansel doing battle with 57 Mark Skeets. Meanwhile, the rest of these cars making their way through to take the chequered flag. Wonderful racing. I think that is that scrap uh, for 19th and 20th which goes through and it is Skeet that holds on from Simon Walker Hansel on his Compact Cup debut. The victory though goes to James Gornall and he goes ahead of Mike Tovey in the battle for second in the points. Confirmation of the results then and it was Gornall who won by just over three and a half seconds. Wiggin was second, Tovey third and he picked up a point for fastest lap as well. Roberts, Miles and Roach completed the top six. In seventh place from 17th on the grid, one of the drivers of the race from James Nutbrown, Paul Hinson dropped back from 5th to 8th, Ben Pearson took 9th and David Drinkwater got ahead of John Watt on the final lap to claim the final position inside the top 10. Down here then with the winner of our first Gadshot Compact Cup race, James Gornall, third of the year for you, uh, what a drive that was. Thank you. After we had a bit of a first lap tussle, I was just able to put my head down and, and pull away, especially when they started to fight, just gave me a bit of breathing room. I was trying to get the fastest lap as well, just to get bonus point, but I, I, I didn't have it in me. Uh, I think I held it for half the race, but then Mike stole it at the end. So overall, a good one, two in the row now, and, and I'd like to try and do a third this afternoon. One more race to come for this season. Uh, you're looking for runners-up spot in the championship? Yes, coming into this weekend, me and Mike were level pegging on drop scores. So now I've taken a bit of a lead. So we'll see what the next one uh, does, but I feel, feel quite confident for it. 
Joe Wiggin coming home in second place there for the Gadshot Compact Cup. What a drive that was for you. Uh, a great fight with Mike to get second. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a good battle actually. It was hard, uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, I kept the pressure on, just kept pushing and uh, eventually made a mistake. So to be here, it's brilliant actually. I don't really have <laughs> nothing else to say really. Quite, quite shocked, but we've got the pace now and hopefully I'll challenge James in the last one, be nice. And that's your first podium of the year. You had to work hard for it, but it's been building up nicely. Yeah, we started off here uh, the first meeting this year and um, we ended up in the gravel in race one. Uh, race two was not so good, <laughs> but then we've gone from a novice in the gravel to battling for a podium. So I feel I'm over the moon. I just want to thank AW Track Sport, HRX Talk Racewear, shot in the tube, and especially thanks to De Declan McDonald, my stepdad who's out there, and my mum and everyone for supporting. Uh, just here, here's the race two. Let's do it again. Be nice. Mike Tovey coming home in third place. Unlucky, unlucky not to get second there. Yeah, it was a tough race. Uh, brilliant start. Pushing Jiggy, trying to get past him, obviously for the championship, but. Uh, Unfortunately, he managed to pull a bit of a gap, making a few mistakes with the car, and uh, that just led me into the clutches of Wiggins, but uh, yeah, it's gutted. Had to be careful as well, now, though, not to, to lose the place to a hound in Steve Roberts. Yeah, he was coming through the pack, I could see him, so sort of teammates at Team Rule, I was hoping that he might come in and help me out, but he was just hanging around the back, but uh, yeah, it's a shame. Had a few podiums this year, still to get that first win though, one more race to come, can you kind of uh, get it there? Yeah, we'll push. Uh, so we need to get, we need to win it. We need to make sure we get fastest lap, and we need to put as many cars through me and Jiggy as well. Uh, see what we can do. Race two about to get underway. Gornel on pole position. Wiggin this time next to him. It's Mike Tovey and Rich Miles on the second row as the lights go out, and the final race of the season in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup gets underway. Heading down towards Redgate Corner for the first time. A great start by Joe Wiggin, and he's gone into the lead of the race. Well, last time out, he grabbed his first podium, second position, denying Mike Tovey crucial points as well. This time, he's gone into the lead, and Mike Tovey, who started on row two, well, he could really have done without that. And look at the gap he's got already. Heading down towards the old table. Oh, slashes the brake there as they go through the right hand up, but it's uh, Wiggin leading from Gornley in second. Tovey, I think, in third. Lots of uh, dust and smoke as the cars make their way through in the setting sun now at Donington Park and David Drinkwater, I think that was, adding to the atmosphere with some dust as well on the exit of the corner. So it's the 41 car of Wigan that leads, then the second and third place cars are the second and third place cars in the championship. Steve Roberts there sliding out wide. He started even further back on the grid for this one on row six. He started 11th, then made his way from 9th to 4th in the opening race. He's not made that kind of progress yet in race two as the leading cars make their way down the exhibition straight towards the Fogarty S's for the first time again. It should be an eight lap race in the 13 minutes plus one lap that we have available. So it's Tovey second and Gornal third now. So Tovey with the advantage, but he needs a bit more of an advantage than that, I think, if he's going to take the championship away from Gornal. Three points between them, Gornal ahead after drop scores coming into this, the final round of the championship. Roberts having already won the title, of course. It's a bit chaotic down here at Melbourne on the opening lap of the first race. Hopefully no such drama this time. We're on board with number 27, John Davis, who was part of that. Now, he started in eighth position. He's made a pretty good start to this race, actually. And he turns his way uh, through the Goddard's head as Roberts there tries to make up some places. Um, yeah, number 27, Jonathan Davis, up to fifth place now from eighth on the grid. So a good start from him as they come through now to complete lap number one of the race. So far, a little bit less dramatic than in race one. Yeah, there's the 27 car of Davis. Just behind him is number 24, Richard Miles, who started on row two in 52, which is Paul Hinson. There's the 65 car of Simon Roach back in 11th position. So he's lost one place on the opening lap. But it's Wiggin that leads, and I'm not sure his lead is quite as big at this part of the circuit as it was on lap one. Tovey going after him then. Then Gorn with his headlights on. Fourth place is the number 58 car of Ian Jones. Now, Ian in the opening race eventually finished down in 14th place but he was running higher for much of it here he started sixth he's up to fourth already and just behind him is the 27 car of jonathan davis but it's wiggin in his first season of car racing the sales consultant from hartford who is backed by hrx he's done some kart racing uh, in the past but uh, enjoying now his season in the compact Cup. back on board with davis There's Hinson then, and he is running in seventh position. 
Owen Hunter just behind him in the 47 car, running a little bit higher than it did in the first race. He was eventually classified 13th in race one of the day, which is one of his uh, lower position finishes of the season. James Wynn Stanley is alongside, I think that is the car of uh, James Nutbrown there in the battle towards the bottom end of the top 20. Nutbrown, of course, made excellent progress in race one up to seventh position. Here is Gornall then behind Tovey, but only by what car and half length or something like that as they make their way up towards the left hander at Goddard. And he has a look down the inside. And does he go through? Very close indeed between the two of them there. Has Gornall made the place his own, I wonder? Yeah, a bit of a hand in the air there, wondering what on earth is going on. Rest of the field making their way through. Just dropping down with the camber onto the Wheatcroft straight, the start and finish straight here at Donington Park. So it was the 18 car that made its way ahead. So Gornall now up to second, Toby third. And Toby here is uh, coming under some pressure from Ian Jones as well in that number 58 car. So they, uh, he just needs to watch out for him. Toby needs to be ahead of Gornall. As things stand, this looks good for James to wrap up second in the championship. What Toby can ill afford here is to lose any more positions. In fact, he needs to get ahead of Gornall, put cars between himself and his rival. So there is Gornall then, number 18. I think he's still determined to try and catch and pass Joe Wiggin for the lead of this race as well. But he'll have a, a difficult enough job, one would think, trying to fend off Mike Tovey, who just flings that car into Coppice Corner now. Almost nose to tail as they head along the uh, exhibition straight. So Tovey should be able to pick up a big toe here and possibly make a move down into the Fogarty S's. So Tovey pulls out of the slipstream into the left-hand side of the circuit, back into the toe now. Left, right, using lots and lots of kerb there through the Fogarty S's. Now down to Melbourne. Wigan it is that is ahead. Almost couldn't see Mike Tovey's car there. He was hidden behind Gornors as they make their way through Melbourne. It's still Davis in fifth position. Sixth is the number 24 car of Miles as they make their way through. See, Roberts, I think, is trying to make up some positions, but he's finding it tough going here at Donington. We went into this weekend hoping to make it. 30 wins in the Compact Cup before he signed off. He needed to win both races to do that. So he's not going to achieve it today. He's moving up to the 3.30 challenge for next season. Just wonder if you might think there's some unfinished Compact Cup business though. On board with Davis once again. So Miles it is in sixth. In seventh place is the 52 car of Hinson. Eighth is the 59 car of Jim Benson who uh, in the first race was a non-starter but he's back out for race two so that's uh, good to see and he took up his position on the third row of the grid so Wiggin from Gornall third and fourth very tight to and Jones some dust being kicked up at Redgate corner you can see there in the background at the top right of your picture and there's Declan McDonald going through some more dust being kicked up well there's dust being kicked up everywhere you look Something of a screen so we can't see the cars as they make their way towards the Starkey's Bridge part of the circuit. So Tovey and Jones. Jones, the former kart racer. 14th in race one of the day. Round 13 of the championship. This is round 14. The concluding event of the season. Still with second place in the championship and with the minor placings hanging on this one down towards the left hander at the Fogarty S's there you can see the 52 car of Hinson now ahead of the 24 car of Richard Miles so that is a change I think for sixth place it looks like Paul Hinson now ahead oh and Gornall's out breaks himself badly at Melbourne and through goes Tovey I think Gornall just sensed a possible chance there of getting the lead away from Joe Wiggin tried to take it locked up in doing so and how many places he, has he lost certainly one Ian Jones is going to try and make it two as well it's one place he's lost out to Tovey Tovey goes back ahead but this on its own is not going to be good enough uh, for, for Mike Tovey in his daylight he needs cars between himself and James Gornall and Ian Jones is trying to put one between them can't make it work not yet so 
It's Gornall third, Jones fourth, but Jones having a look as they go through the Craner curves now. And it's <laughs> absolute chaos further back. Owen Hunter was all over the curves. You could see Jim Benson trying to make up places. But here Gornall is trying to fend off Jones, who's now on the inside line for the old hairpin, and he goes through. So Jones goes third, Gornall fourth, and can Jonathan Davis in fifth position? John O'Davis, is he going to do anything about James Gornall as well? John was taken ill after the race at Snetterton last time out due to uh, fumes going into the cockpit of his car after the exhaust was broken early on in the race but uh, good to see his fighting fit and uh, going well here at Donington and he's going for fourth position at Coppice Corner I think he's gone through has he? Gornall is pushed out a little bit wide there and Davis does go through to take fourth place away from Gornall now and if it stays like this, could this be the championship for Mike Tovey, I wonder? We just need to wait and see how all the points will work out at the end of this race. But this is just what Mike Tovey wanted. Well, Mike Tovey would have wanted to have been leading this race, but he's now got two cars between himself and his title, well, not title rival, but his second place rival, James Gornall, who has gone from second down to fifth in the space of uh, just one lap. So Gorn going to come over the line in fifth at the end of lap five. It's going to be Richard Miles in sixth place, I think. He is heading this next week. Yeah, he's the one with lighting up his uh, tyres at the moment. Then it's side by side further back. I think that's Simon Roach just snapping seventh place away from Paul Hinson with Steve Roberts there now up to ninth position. And Owen Hunter, 47, completes the top ten as they go over the line. But here comes James Gornall trying to get at least one of those places back. Oh, and there's a car off there with its bonnet having flown up. Now I think that might be the 99 car of Ben Pearson. It looks like he's managed to collide with the, one of the polystyrene corner markers. Possibly that was after his bonnet flew up in front of his windscreen and he was unsighted. We've lost Simon Bastiman as well, I think. Ben Pearson now out of the race too. As we're now on to lap six of the race, so probably just three laps to go. And there's Roberts losing a place to Hunter. So he goes down to 10th place now. Well, with Ben Pearson seemingly out of the race, that puts paid, I think, to his hopes of, uh, well, sixth place in the championship. He will drop back down the order, I'm afraid. Back on board with Gornall, still fifth. But through Coppice, double apex right-hander gets alongside Davis now. I think he's probably got his nose in front here. No, he's not. There you can see Davis, the driver from uh, Cambridgeshire, with his nose briefly in front. And I think he's pointing to say, look, uh, John, oh, let's try and work together here. I could really do with catching those chaps in front of us, if you don't mind. It's Davis from Gornall still, fourth and fifth. And it's Wigan leading. Yes, Tovey still there in second place, and Jones in third position. Look now to the end of lap number six of this race. On board with Davis, making his way up towards the Goddard hairpin. And he takes that one uh, quite nicely. Out of the corner he goes. Dazzled briefly by the sunlight as he comes onto the Wheatcroft straight. Over the line to start uh, another lap, lap seven of this race now. So this is the penultimate lap of the race by my reckoning. It's Wiggin still leading. In the final race of his first season, there is the 27 car of Davis, but with only half a car length behind him, number 18, James Gornall, just possibly pushing the track limits uh, a little bit too far, running a wheel off over the edge of the kerb. So that might attract the uh, interest of uh, the observers and therefore the clerk of the course. You can get a wheel over the edge of the kerb or over the white line on a couple of occasions and get away with it, but more than that, will start to incur time penalties and James Gornall can ill afford that really uh, as far as his championship is concerned lap and a half to go and I think James Gornall is absolutely determined here to get back ahead of Jonathan Davis because I think he realises that he could absolutely do with P4 here if Mike Tovey is going to finish second which is where he's running now through copies and onto the exhibition straight they come for the moment it's still Davis, who himself is uh, trying to secure a good position in the championship, eighth coming into this weekend. 
there's a drop scores to take into account as well. So Davis running in fourth position here. Gordle in fifth. Down the uh, straight towards the hairpin, the Melbourne hairpin. This is where it all went wrong for James Gordon a few laps ago. He went very deep into the corner, ran wide, lost places, and uh, much neater this time. Yeah. John Davis now saying, well, let's, let's work together. So they head up towards the left-hander. That Goddard. And is he letting... Go oh, he's not letting him through, is he? There's contact between Gordon and Davis. That means that Davis edges wide. It was side-to-side -side contact. No particular time lost and I shouldn't have thought too much damage done this is what it looked like from on board with Gornall there's the contact you can just feel that there halfway around the corner just on the apex more or less and yep all of that has meant that Gornall has gone back through so there is Tovey and there is Jones and Jones is well he's not given up on second place here either has he I think as things stand second to Tovey fourth to Gornall. Gornall will just nick this by the slenderest of margins. Second place in the championship. But uh, what about Jonathan Davis? He might try and get back through again. Less than half a lap to go now. You've got the Fogarty Esses, you've got the Melbourne hairpin, you've got the Goddard hairpin as well. Joe Wiggin, by the way, has more or less checked out in this race. He's well up front. A very mature try from Joe. I'm sure he didn't dream that he'd be doing this leading a race so comfortably at Donington Park by the end of the season so down to the hairpin Tovey desperately trying to cling on to second place by his fingernails here Gornall doing everything he can to stay in fourth place as well but if it stays like this it's good news for Gornall not such good news for Mike Tovey but it's uh, Joe Wiggin through the Goddard hairpin for the final time well what a season he has had and actually this result could do great things for him as well. He comes up, he comes over the line, he takes the check flag. And it's Joe Wiggin that wins at Donington Park. Second goes to Mike Tovey. Fourth goes to James Gornall. And it's Gornall that therefore just finishes second in the championship. And great fight still going on all the way down the order as ever. With the final place in the top ten just being taken by Owen Hunter from David Drinkwater. And Mark Morton, number 26 going into a very late retirement. Here are the results then. Joe Wiggin winning by more than four seconds from Mike Tovey, Ian Jones and James Gornall. Jonathan Davis was fifth and Richard Miles was sixth. Simon Roach took seventh place, Paul Hinson eighth. Jim Benson got fastest lap on his way to ninth position and Owen Hunter rounded out the top ten. Joe Wigan, many congratulations on your first win within the Compact Cup. That didn't take too long, did it? No, no, first year and I've done it and uh, couldn't believe it. The car felt like a spaceship, really. It was just, uh, <laughs> it was brilliant. And, uh, you know, the way that it just, I don't know, the car did it all, the team did it all. It's a great effort. And, you know, we've, it's, you know, we ended the first race here in the gravel and, um, and now we've uh, won the last race of the championship. So I think it's been a good progression, if I'm honest with you. But I wouldn't have been able to have done it without everyone who's standing behind me over there who's supporting me. So, yeah. That race started a little bit close, you had a few uh, tough competitors on your tail, but then you just got your head down and pulled away. Yeah, I didn't expect to overtake James that easily, like, I think he got a pretty bad start, so I got a great start, got past him, and then I looked in the mirrors and he had his lights on, he was trying to put me off, but it weren't working, and uh, <laughs> we, were, we were just, as I said, the car's a spaceship, we were just pulling away, and, and now it was great, and uh, I just want to say a big thank you to uh, Andy Waters um, and AW Tracksport, my mum, Deck, and my family there, because without them and everyone supporting me, without them I wouldn't even be on the grid, and, I just, uh, it's brilliant. Now this puts you in good stead for next year. You're going to come back and do it again? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, uh, I think after that we've got to, got to fight for next year and uh, hopefully add to the tally of wins. That's the first win and hopefully the first win of many, I'd like to say. Joe, many congratulations. Thank Great you. drive. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Oh, we passed screwing here first. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tovey coming home in second place there. You tried to get to the top spot, uh, but you couldn't quite achieve it, but still a great result. A uh, great result. Uh, it was a long race of, it was a battle between me and Jiggy. Um, I was watching the mirrors once I got past him and I'm watching him fall back in a couple of places. I needed two cars between us and I think I needed a fast lap to pip second in the championship. But on that last lap he got back past Davis and uh, it just shattered. I was just shaking my head coming across the start line.
At one point it looked like you could be runner-up, of course, because James did fall back, but as you said, it didn't quite happen uh, towards the end. But your season's been fairly consistent. Yeah, I just want to say a huge thanks to Raw Motorsport, my family. Uh, they've all supported me, and uh, Tim Wilson Motorsport as well. They've been brilliant to me. But yeah, and uh, find my car at Cool UK as well. Brilliant. You can relax now for a few months before it all begins for next year. Um, I think it's a bit of a time out for me. I'm uh, going to step away from the Compact Cup and uh, go and have some fun, I think. Ian Jones coming home in third place. What a way to end the season for you. Yes, it's uh, been a long time coming since Brands. Uh, the rest of the year we've been having um, engine problems, uh, electrical problems, uh, you name it, it's gone wrong. Hopefully they're all out the way now um, and we're sort of half on the road for next season to have a clean season. And what a close fought race that was out the front between yourself and Joe and uh, Mike out there. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's how it, how it should be. Um, my the previous race was the same, but I was further back down the grid. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant fun. Best way to come racing. You nearly got second. You tried your best to get past Mike on that last lap. Yeah, it was difficult because it would have been a bit of a a 50-50 move, and Mike was trying for the championship, and I was out of it. So it's a if it was 100%, I would have taken it, but it wasn't. So I thought better of it. Great to get you on the podium. Back for next year. Yep, definitely. Great stuff, well done Ian. Thank you. Well let's have a look at the final point standings then and it's Steve Roberts that wins the championship by 25 points but just one point separating James Gornell and Mike Tovey. Despite a poor weekend here at Donington, Owen Hunter took fourth and Jonathan Davis took fifth and listen to this, Joe Wiggin up to sixth place with a stellar weekend, a second and a first in the final round of the championship. John Watt was seventh, Simon Roach eighth, Ben Pearson ninth after a disappointing weekend for him and James Nook Brown completed the top 10. Well, that's all from the 2015 Compact Cup season. From all of us here, it's goodbye.